Let's unbox the Typhoon Q500 4K from Unique. First, we have a little sheet here which actually has an inventory of what's in the box. Pretty handy, actually. So you can make sure you got all the pieces you need. This is a card here from knowbeforeyoufly.org. This card contains some warnings and safety information. In the quick start guide, you have everything you need to get going. This is the user manual for the Steady Grip version 3. Very handy. This right here is the most important piece of paper in this box. It tells you what the LED status indicators mean. It also tells you how to calibrate the compass, which can be very, very handy in the field. I would carry this with you, I would laminate it, or have it on your smartphone. Next we have propellers. Lots of propellers, nice black propellers. They give you actually eight of them. These are labeled A and B, so you can tell which direction they go in. This is a sunshade for the screen. It just sticks on top of the radio. And we have an accessory kit, which includes an SD card. And we'll get to that in a few minutes here. I want to see the aircraft, so let's see what we have here. Oh, there it is. The Q500 4K. You know, I like the color scheme. That's nice. The kind of black and silver. Very stylish. And the dark color does make this aircraft stand out better against a bright sky. And furthermore, it's a proven scientific fact that the cooler an aircraft looks, the faster it flies. Okay, we have one battery. Actually, we have two batteries in this aircraft. That's very nice. They include a spare, so that's great. And we have the battery charger here. And we have the power adapter for the charger, 12 volts. And we have over here, we have the, this is an American power cord for the charger. Let's see, next over here is the charger for the radio, a little USB adapter. This is a DC adapter for the charger so you can charge it in your car. That's pretty handy. Next, we have the radio. This is a nice radio, actually. It's very similar to the Q500 Plus. Okay, here we have the grip for the camera. So you can mount the camera to the front of this and use it as a handheld. It's a slightly upgraded model from the Q500 Plus. Okay, and now back to the accessory box. All sorts of goodness in there. So first thing we have is this here. This is a little device to hold on to the motor while you tighten and loosen the propellers. Next we have, this is a spare charge lead adapter. The charger uses one of these to charge the battery, and this gives you an extra one just in case you happen to lose it or break it. Another reason they may have given us two of these is that this allows you to charge the aircraft batteries with a normal LiPo battery charger. This connects in here and adapts it to a balance board, and then you just plug in an EC3 connector here. A set of keys for the box there so you can lock the box. This little guy right here is a spare battery door clip. If you break the battery door clip, the battery door won't close anymore. This allows you to fix that. This is the strap for the radio, so you can hang the radio around your neck for safety, essentially. It makes it easier if you have to let go for some reason. And this doubles as a clothes hanger for your American Girl doll. Here we have an A to micro B cable for charging the radio from the power adapter we have here. This is the USB programmer, so you can upgrade the firmware. Next, we have a pair of tweezers for tweezing things. Ow! Oh. We recommend keeping the programmer and tweezers together. The tweezers you use to retrieve the cable from the inside of the aircraft. Let's see, this little package, we've got some accessories for the camera. First thing is an SD card. The SD card contains some documentation, some videos, and of course the quick start guide. You want to make a backup copy of this before you start using the card, just in case. Let me take a closer look at this SD card real quick. Okay, so what we have in the adapter is a, it looks like a Panasonic U1 high speed 16 gigabyte memory card. Now, it's gotta be pretty fast for the 4K camera. This is a little lens cloth for your camera and what looks to be a filter adapter. Yeah, Mr. Vaughn, I expect you to die. <laughs> Included are a couple of filters. We have an ND filter for bright light, and we have a UV filter, which I suggest leaving on the camera when you're not using the ND filter. 
the protective lens. And of course, a lens cloth to clean it. So a quick look at the aircraft itself, it's actually a very light aircraft, probably due to the way it's assembled here. It's a couple pieces with this lattice work in between here to, to make the frame nice and light, but still pretty stiff and rigid. On the bottom here, the motor actually, it's got a little light here, each of the motors. So this lights up so you can tell what's going on from the air, you can orientation. The back here, it's actually got an indicator light for your mode. This little switch here is the on off button. So it's got a hardware on and off. So you click it on, it's on, click it off, it's off. You're not worrying about trying to unplug wires in the field. It's pretty handy actually. Up top here, the battery, just press and the battery comes out. That's it. Just put the battery in there. You're good to go. And on the front of the aircraft, of course, is the gimbal. And they have this little plastic piece here, which keeps it straight. So when you're transporting, it's not flopping around every which way. It's actually quite nice. At the heart of the system, and what sets it apart from its predecessor, the Q500 Plus, is the 4K ultra high definition camera. It'll record in 4K. It'll also record at 1080p up to 120 frames per second and capture 12 megapixel photos. You know, this is a very nice, solid feeling aircraft. It doesn't feel plasticky at all. It feels pretty solid, actually. So let's take a look at the radio now. Now, before I do that, I gotta power on the aircraft. Let's first remove the protective little housing here to keep the gimbal straight while shipping. You don't want that on. and turn the aircraft on, on the bottom. And put it aside. Okay, now for the radio. Little thing off there. This radio is a computerized radio, so it takes a little while to boot up actually. So the tablet comes on. Then you'll get your screen. The aircraft beeps to acknowledge. It connects to the aircraft and the camera both. Here's a warning about the SD card, which is not currently inserted into the camera. If you see this warning, put your card in. Okay, so what we have here on the screen, in the center, we have our camera controls, which actually we're gonna do a whole separate video on that subject. So we can go to that in great detail there. Also in that follow-up video, we're gonna take a closer look at the handheld steady grip. And we'll finally get an answer to the age-old question, did Han shoot first? We have our flight mode, our GPS. We have 14 satellites, shows our, which is actually really good for being indoors. Shows our position. Over here on the right-hand side, we have our pack voltage of our aircraft, our altitude, our GPS speed, our distance from where we powered up the aircraft. And on the very top here, we have the radio. We have its battery condition, its Wi-Fi condition, its number of satellites, of course, the time, and then we can go into our options down here and the buttons, your settings, the touch screen. So this warns you it's gonna unhook from the aircraft. You can check your battery, you can check your options. You basically make adjustments, bind more aircraft. It's all a nice little touch screen. If you double tap the screen, you get a full screen of the camera, which is pretty handy actually if you're trying to pilot this thing in the field and want just the camera view. So you attach the sunshade with little suction cups to the screen here. And so in the sun, you can see the screen without glare. Okay, and as for the rest of the functions of the radio, let's take this off. And we have our standard controls here, our two sticks, so pitch and roll, yaw and throttle. We have our trim adjustments here, our flight mode switch on top, very unique uh, rabbit and turtle mode. You can make it go faster and slower here. This switch here is the gimbal adjustment, so you can adjust the angle of the gimbal. So this button over here is, just, is the photograph button. You press the button, it takes a photograph. Pretty simple. This button here, you press it, starts the video recording, and press it again, and it stops the video from recording. The little red button is your start-stop button. So you press and hold that to start your motors, and after you've landed, you press and hold that to kill, to kill the motors. So now on to flight testing. So now that we're out here in the field, the first thing we're gonna take a look at is aircraft performance. And then we're gonna spend a few minutes with the gimbal. After that, we'll test a look at me mode and see how that works. Okay, well the first thing to say is it flies like a unique. It's remarkably smooth and steady. Uh, the one thing I love about these aircraft is how smoothly they fly. On the side of the aircraft here, you've got a slider which moves between tortoise and hare. 
When it's in tortoise position, the aircraft responds very gradually to your input, very slowly. However, slide it up to hair and it moves very quickly, or at least more quickly. This isn't a fast aircraft when it's operating in GPS mode regardless, but there's definitely a difference between tortoise and hare. On the left side of the screen, the aircraft is in tortoise mode. On the right side, hare mode. Here's a full throttle takeoff in each mode. And now in the same configuration, you see moving the stick side to side. So you can see how that mode really affects aircraft performance. You also have the option of disabling GPS mode, which will allow for even more aggressive maneuvers. In order to do this, you click on the gear icon in the lower corner of the screen. It warns you that you're gonna lose camera and telemetry control. You click okay to that. You scroll down to the very bottom here. You see GPS, you just click off. Now you're flying in what would effectively be attitude mode. All right, well, as you can see, the aircraft is capable of getting quite a bit more aggressive maneuvers when it's not in GPS mode. And in fact, you're capable of pushing the nose down far enough you can see the props in the camera's view. So clearly this isn't gonna be an everyday mode, but if you do need to be able to maneuver more aggressively, it's good to know you've got it. One other thing to be aware of is that the tortoise and hare slider still works. So you can tune the aircraft up and down in real time. Although I have to warn you, in tortoise mode, it's a bit scary because it responds so slowly. If you get caught in the wind, you're not gonna be able to fight it. All right, now we're gonna to touch on return to home mode. We're not big fans of it ourselves, but if you have to use it, here's how you do it. Flip the mode switch all the way to the bottom. The aircraft will begin coming home. If you need to, you can disable it by flipping the switch back up to the neutral position and resume control of the aircraft. However, even while it's in return to home mode, you have some control of the aircraft. You can continue giving it directional inputs, say if it's gonna land on an obstacle or something, you can make a minor steer and make it get out of the way. Now we're gonna take a look at the aircraft's gimbal. We've mounted two HD cameras, one to the back of the aircraft here, and the other to the side of the aircraft, both of which are pointed at the gimbal, which will showcase the motion of the gimbal as we're doing some uh, severe maneuvers. One of the nice features of this gimbal that came in really handy while we were mounting these cameras is that when it's flipped upside down, the motors disable and it doesn't try to fight you. And then when the aircraft slipped right side up again, it re-energizes. Now we get to see Breaker fly Beggar's Canyon, just like back home. I'm flying down Beggar's Canyon here, and I'm deliberately giving a lot of severe stick inputs, so you can see what a good job the gimbal's doing at maintaining a stable image. Now it's time for you to watch me demonstrate watch me mode. It's very similar to follow me, but it watches you. Basically it turns the aircraft to look at you and aims the gimbal down or up depending where you are. Really easy actually, just take it, move the smart switch to smart mode here and it's automatically in following mode. You go on screen, hit the little eyeball, it turns green, now it's in watch me. It'll rotate the aircraft towards you and keep the gimbal going up and down. Now I'm gonna hand the radio over to Breaker. He's gonna go pedaling away on his bike on a trail and we're gonna watch it, watch him. We're going to speed up the video here so you can see how well the aircraft watches him. That was our look at the unique Q500 4K. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. Nice job, man. You getting your exercise right?
Hey guys, one last thing before we go. Phil from out on the internet sent us these really cool little quadcopter pins and asked if we'd show them to you. So anyway, he's selling them on eBay. I'll put a link in the video description so you can figure out how to get one for yourself.